Eh. Anyway, last video of this game. Um, so last time, we beat the game, and then I tried some DLC, and was like, this is alright, and then I stopped playing it. Now we're about to do some different DLC, and probably have the same result. So, um... I hear this one's apparently somewhat different-ish. I guess we'll find out. Um, if it seems to be the same, like, intro level, then I'll probably cut ahead to afterwards, but... Let's just, uh, see what we're in for at the beginning here, I guess. It says it's a prequel, so... If I had actually paid attention to any of the story of the main game, then this would probably be more interesting, but... Meanwhile, all the sirens outside. Not that they're getting picked up by this microphone now. Also, really hoping that the audio balance is okay, because I just did like five recording tests. And, uh, it got a little bit better in each one, but I don't know. I just... I have no real attachment to anything that's going on here, so whatever. I'm, mo I'm mostly distracted by the funky palette swapping that's going on with the fading effect. Okay. Wasn't sure if I had control there or not. Okay, so, so far, same kind of controls. Um... Curios. Alright. So, is this gonna be basically the same level? Oh wait, what is this now? Okay, so I don't have a double jump, I do have a wall jump. Uh, okay, there we go. Apparently, you can run up walls. Nice of the game to tell me that. How dare it not explain everything immediately. I guess if it was an NES game, it wouldn't, so... Oh, but only if it's not grass. I can't go up the grass walls. I can go up the dirt, though. Weird. Alright. Yeah, anyone else ever have that issue? Well... I guess this, uh, there's a bit of a prerequisite involved in this line of thought here. You have to have, you have to be old enough to, like, have grown up in the NES era and also, like, frequently rented games. But, um, if you do fall into that category, um, I feel like I can't be alone in, like, the, uh, I basically had an issue with a lot of games that I would rent where, because the game didn't really explain stuff, and, okay, what is this thing? I guess that's something that I want. Oh, okay. But yeah, it's like, the, the stuff wasn't explained well, and so, um, I would, like, just meet some random thing early on in the game that would, like, block me from continuing, and it you're supposed to have, like, some ability to get past it that you're probably supposed to learn about in the manual, and then since, cause I, like, since I wouldn't have that, I wouldn't know what to do. I remember a lot of games doing that. Um, the one that immediately comes to mind is uh, Rollo to the Rescue. It's a Genesis game where you play as an elephant, and you have, like, animal compadres, I don't know why I used that word, um, that all have, like, different skills and stuff, and I remember there just being a part where, like, there's basically just a giant wall in your way, and there's no clearly obvious way to get past it, and 
and I got up to that point and I had to stop playing because I couldn't figure out what to do. If I was to actually touch that game again now, I would uh, probably not have that much difficulty with it because my uh, gaming senses have evolved past the point of like, if pressing each button one time doesn't work, then clearly it's impossible. I don't know. I'd have to see what it was, actually. I remember nothing of that game other than the fact that you were an elephant named Rollo, and there was a candy called Rollos, and whenever I see them, I always think of the elephant. I don't remember if I rented that game or played it on the Sega Channel, but either way, same kind of thing. And on the same line of thinking, when I... The very first time I ever played any Mega Man game was... The Wily Wars on Sega Channel, which was a remake of the first three games. A very bad remake, I should mention, but, uh... Um, I distinctly remember playing Woodman stage in Mega Man 2, and there just being a wall in the way that I couldn't figure out how to get past. Which is weird, because that never happens in that stage. Like, I've beaten that game tons of times now, and there, there is nothing at all like that, so I don't know why I have that memory. But, um, yeah, I don't think I ever actually beat a single stage in Mega Man, so I never really knew that there was a, uh, like, get abilities from other bosses mechanic to that game. I always just thought that you were a guy who does go, on, does go shoot and that was about it. I was wondering why that formula lasted for so many games. Anyway, this, uh, so far I've gotta say, this does seem to be the training level, but I can't tell if the, uh, exact layout is the same, because as usual, it's been a couple weeks since I've played this, so I don't remember the exact. And there we go. Don't remember the exact layout, but uh, this one takes place at night, so it's totally different. But now this is fine, so. Basically, all I'm getting so far is the uh, slash things in midair to do a upward diagonal dash mechanic, which is kind of cool. I don't know if it necessarily justifies a whole new character, but... I'll try to basically just get through this stage, and then, judging from what the world map looks like, we'll play a different stage, and then that'll probably be about the end of this. Prolong your undeath. Okay, so that's like a health upgrade, basically. Undeath, that's a good word. I know what it's trying to say, but it was still weird something. Also, that is some decent, uh, faux 8-bit artwork in the background. I don't think that's actually 8-bit, because it seems to have too many colors for that. So are there any, like, 8-bit graphic purists out there that hate it when games do stuff like this, because it's like, it's very clearly evocative of the NES days, but I'm pretty sure these graphics are too good to actually be an NES game. Like, I know that, uh, I know that there were various tricks they could do on the system, like how Mega Man's face is just a different sprite layer in order to get more colors than there usually would be. So, like, maybe there's no individual sprite in this that breaks the rules, but, I don't know, they kind of look like they do. It's hard to say. I'd have to, like, actually closely analyze them. Like, these dirt blocks seem to only be three colors, which is doable. Um, 
even like the ground here though. Like the grass on top of the dirt I think would have to be a separate sprite layer from the dirt itself in order for that to work out mechanically. But I do not know much about the like inner workings of 8-bit games, so I could be talking out of my ass here. Ah, shit. So, yeah. Need to remember that uh, he does have a downward strike. That, that is indeed a thing that exists. I'm not sure how to, like... If there's a way to force him to not do it. Like, I guess it just depends on my placement compared to the anime. So, if I wait until I'm below the bubble, I'd probably be good enough. A guns. Gotta get that uh, apple core. I like how I don't actually have like a standard downward attack if there's no enemy present, so I break dirt by just kind of jumping on it, and then it crumbles. Ah, shit. It'll respawn, right? Yeah. So, yeah, let's test my theory here. Okay. Yeah, the, the game gives, like, that little... Oh, shit! <laughs> I wasn't actually expecting to fall off there. Um... It gives, like, that little fire... Th I, for some reason, I thought that that was, like, actually a fire attack that things were using that I was just somehow really good at dodging. But no, it's very clearly meant to be an animation to show what way my, uh, slash kicks me. Okay. Apparently jumping on... Destroyable ground like that also uncovers it. Okay, all right then. So um. Oh okay. Was that different? Terror pin. Yeah, this is this is something new. Okay. But yeah, I'm noticing that. Uh, of the two DLCs, both of the, like, extra characters that you can play as seem to be of the, uh, dark and edgy variety. Which, uh, they are villains in the first game, so that kind of makes sense. But there were also villains that were not specifically based on, like, the darkness element. And so, um... I'm not completely sure why they chose these two specifically. I guess maybe they were just fan favorites. Are they going to be doing more after these, or I'm just kind of asking randomly without expecting an answer? But we got to find out what uh, King Knight's backstory is. He's a important and deep character, I'm sure. Magician. Sorry, you can't just you, you can't just have the name Donovan there and not have me say that. I don't actually know anything about Donovan the singer, but I know the magician, and that's all I need. Meanwhile. Everything must always be fools. I think there was, like, a compilation image of, like, all the Disney villains calling 
the main character a fool or just calling something in general a fool. It is, uh, is a very PG way to have somebody have, like, an attitude. Also, I totally did not mean to uncover this, but since I did, what do we got here? Edge Farmer. That's a, that's a good accent right there. What is this? I kind of like it, but I'm not sure what I'm looking at right now. Like, was I meant to find this? I mean, obviously I was, but I, I don't know if this was, like... I don't know if I had to go here, or if I was supposed to go just straight right at the place. I just kind of found it by accident. Endless Parapet, yes. So, so are we finally about to uh, complete our quest of finding out what parapets are? Board the platform. I can't, it's too hot up. And now things are happening, okay. Um, jumping into attacks. Also, I, uh, am noticing this darkness meter that I have. How do I do anything with that? Probably don't. I guess that's just, like, my magic. I don't have any magic yet. Oh, shit, I'm supposed to be outrunning this. Okay. Uh, I'll try that again. Perhaps you'd like to try again sometime. Immediately does. I liked my, uh, my parapets joke earlier. I'm going to make the same joke again. Are you, are you ready for it? Because it's going to be the exact same joke as it was last time. And by that, I mean not really a joke at all. And also, I'm not going to actually do it. So, um... Is this... Yeah, this seems to be different layout every time, because the last one I couldn't actually figure out how to get up. And this one... Wow, I'm not a smart person. I will try it one more time. And by that, I mean the vine sauce type of one more time, which is, like, six more times. I kind of like stuff like this, just randomly generated. This is an endless thing, but it's an ongoing thing. I'm reminded of the uh, Mega Man 9 endless mode, and the Mega Man 5 fan-made endless mode, based on it. I've not played that in a very long time. Fuck that. Okay. I guess we're done with this. I would like to get past that, but I am not a good. So, let's go Oh. Bone clang. Cludge. F fudge clank. I'm trying to think of, like... Bone Clang, and I immediately think Fudge Clang. I, I'm not sure what that says about me. Also, what the hell is this thing? Just a very creepy looking vulture. With an odd color palette. Okay, so yeah, I guess I... didn't really discover anything all that... Oh no, I can't actually get up this way. Yeah, I guess that was sort of a secret. Okay. Don't know what this thing is. Liquid Samurai. What, is that like an obscure Metal Gear Solid villain? If 
you should happen upon a red skull, even a hundred of them. Okay. Alright, I can do Boomerang Blade. This. Or a healing thing. Healing thing probably sounds the most useful. Um, I can buy that and one other one, so... Oh, wait, he doesn't give it to me? Okay. Alright. Funky. Okay. Now, see, this I can kind of get on board with, so it's like... You actually you have to trade in the stuff to buy this, but then uh, you actually have to complete a level to do it. That's kind of cool. And it's like a oh, and I die in one hit apparently. So I can't attack, and wow! All right. Suddenly the game got a hell of a lot harder. Jesus. Wait, I'm extremely stupid. I literally just got a thing to make myself... Wow, okay. Uh, hold on. Oh, wait, I can't. Can I not use the item I just picked up? I thought that's what I was supposed to do. Oh, somehow my controls got changed. It's not up and attack anymore. Okay. Okay. That makes a bit more sense than being expected to get through this without getting hit. So, not much of a level, but still, it was kind of cool. So yeah, why can't I do up and B for that? That's weird. Oh well, let's go ahead and do another one. I kind of want the boomerang, but... been like a thing with me. Whenever I play a game that, like, if it's a demo where there's clearly no point to, like, be conservative with stuff, or if it's a game that I'm specifically only doing, like, a short trial of and I have no plans to, like, continue playing it afterwards, I always play in such a way where I'm, like, preparing for eventually getting to, like, I don't know if I'm wording this right. I'm also not sure what triggered me think. Yeah, it's like just like, oh, I should get this gem. I'll want money later, even though I'm probably not gonna play this again. I I, I don't know. I mean, th this does seem fun. It might be like if I run out of things to stream someday, I can go back to this. It does not seem like a bad game. It's just uh, I have an issue with playing new things. Given the choice between playing a game I've beaten 700 times and something new and interesting, I will always pick the more boring option. Okay, what is this now? Are we having fun yet? It's a mimic, but with memes. No, I don't know what this thing actually is. All 
Alright, well I think I've spent long enough dicking around here. This is, okay, so you pay this to give yourself magic, basically. Anyway, I should probably check out an actual level. Uh, oh, what did I just do? Shit. Okay. Oh. So this is the level select. Okay. Alright, so we've got... These are all regular characters. And then we have Phantom Striker, which sounds like something new, so check out what this is, I guess. Not sure if I'll actually finish this stage, but we'll give it a look sees. Always. Again, not having the memory to actually remember something that I played, like, more than two minutes ago. I don't remember if this is what, uh, Inspector Knight's original level was like. I definitely remember the, uh, the ghost wizards from Dr. McNinja and the trees that float, but, uh, I don't think the level was like this, was it? Yeah, did I did I ever make a reference to the ghost wizard from Dr. McNinja? Because that is totally what that looks like. If you know what I'm talking about, then all I have to do is say knife eye attack and you will be like, that is a wave. I enjoyed that. If you don't know what I'm talking about, then I don't know, I mean, the phrase knife eye attack in general is still pretty good. <laughs> I'm just thinking, there was like a very elaborate alt text joke in one of the Ghost Wizard, like, segments of that, with, uh, talking about how uh, Mitzi would, like, she lost out on her ability to get, like, a, uh, Lifetime original movie, and how if Dr. McNinja ever somehow got, like, a theatrical release, he, like, the author would totally squander the ability to make a good movie and specifically make one with, like, the budget and appearance of a Lifetime original movie just for the sake of the show. Can we not keep dying there, actually? That would be good. Yeah, you know, for, for all the times that I've mentioned Dr. McNinja throughout the years, I, I still have not actually finished reading that. I stopped. Oh, okay. There is probably a flash flood occurring or some stupid shit like that. I don't really care. Um, but, uh... Stop falling in holes! I was starting to say, somewhere around the point where, uh... The story went to, like, the... Bad future where dinosaurs took over... Plot. Which went on for, like... 500 fucking pages. Like, I got through several parts of that. And it... I think I finally got through that whole bit. And then there was, like, this weird thing about, like... God, there was, like, some random asshole that looked like Carl from Aqua Teen Hunger Force that was, like, an evil sorcerer without meaning to be, and, ugh, oh, god, I don't remember what the hell was going on with the story, I remember the entire city turning into a giant mech, and that's about it, like, I don't know if I kept reading after that, I, I need to go back and finish that at some point.
I guess this is just an Easter egg room. Not really sure if it has any point in or not. Get up. Going back to the ninja thing, I, I want to say the comic either ended or is like very close to ending. So I, that, that goes back further to me thinking that I should probably finish it at some point. I did enjoy it, I just I feel like it kind of got stuck on the same story arc for too long. And speaking of com web comics that are good, um, while very old and having finished an extremely long time ago, I still maintain that uh, Kid Brad is amazing, and anybody who does not write it probably should. Also, Kid Brad needs to be. That was my uh, that was my thought when I saw the original trailer for Wreck It Ralph. Is like, if Kid Brad ever got a movie, this would be that movie. I kind of wish it didn't spend an hour and a half in Candyland, but it was still alright. I think I'm really going to see the one. And going off of that line of thought, um, movies that either should or should not have sequels, I saw Cars 3 last week. If you liked Cars 1 and hated Cars 2, you'll probably like number 3. If you are like me and never watched Cars 1 all the way through, and found Cars 2 stupidly enjoyable, then, uh, for your own damn opinion on them. Uh, I thought it was alright. I mainly enjoyed the fact that there was a character named Cruz, because it reminded me of, uh, the YouTube group Little Tards. But, anyway, how far am I on this level? Not very, apparently. Cruz, there you are! I need you to fly. I'm depending on you to fly. So, why are there just random walls that appear in this stage now? That's a mechanic that I could probably do without. Shit, okay. Yeah, yeah. At this point, I kind of just want to get to the end. Like, if this, this is the last video I'm going to be doing of this series, then I don't mind it going a little bit longer and like actually completing the level. I'm not gonna be like the freaking South Park commentary and be like, oh, I've hit my limit, I guess I'm done with this forever. Like, if you have no idea what I'm talking about, um, in the South Park DVD commentaries, which I uh, watched several of, by several I mean like most of them, I uh, found them on YouTube several years back and watched a bunch of them. Um, Matt and Trey apparently don't like the idea of DVD commentaries because they think it's annoying when they ramble on and on about stuff, which I find incredibly stupid because if you're watching a DVD commentary, it's probably like a movie or a show that you're interested in and would like to know their thoughts behind how it was made and stuff. So it wouldn't be rambling on and on. Like, why would you put on the track if you didn't want to listen to it? But they apparently thought that there was something worth hating about them. So in the first season, they did talk throughout the entire episode. And then and from the second season onwards, they decided that this was like a waste of everybody's time. And so they would only talk over like the first three to five minutes of the episode and then just kind of stop. And so there were several episodes that they went through where they were starting to talk about, like, the creation of it and stuff, and then they're just, oh, well, we, okay, well, it's been, like, three minutes, uh, I guess we're, we'll be done with this one, sorry. We went on a little bit too long there. Like, you assholes, what the hell? Isn't 
Trey Parker and Despicable Me 3. That, 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 that was the main... The reason I was talking about Cars 3 and bad sequels is because... Um, there were some really fucking awful looking trailers before that movie. One of which was the uh, trailer for the Frozen short that is going to be airing before Coco. I don't know why a short needs a trailer, but there you go. Um, but Despicable 3... Despicable 3 Me, that, that's what that movie's called, um, looked like some hot trash. But I was not the biggest fan of that series in the first place, so... Saying Trey Parker was in there, I don't know what character he was in there. It's just like some kind of movie. Can I get a save point? I feel like I'm probably gonna die and then I'm gonna be sad. Recently, I was, like, galactically incapable of playing through a Pokemon game without catching everything that I encounter and trying to build a Pokedex. Like, even if it's a game I've already done that in, and it's just a replay. I'll do it again for no reason. I like how I said, until somewhat recently, and yet I'm still doing that in my yellow playthrough, and crystal one that's gonna be coming soon, so yeah, that never really stopped that. my flaws and then I do nothing to improve on them. You know what my kind of my favorite kind of gameplay is? Not being able to see. Take the main gimmick of Illuminator from Action 52 and make it into a level. Okay, no. 
I knew exactly what I had to do there, but because I couldn't see, it was difficult. I'll just jump on this platform when it comes back down. Oh, what's that? The track extends way further than it visually does, and you can't tell anyway because it's shrouded in blackness. Ah, oh, whatever. Dude, I don't know. Oh no, not green vertical lines. It's the return of the tank. Behest is a good word. Every single time there's like a conversation with the boss of the stage, I always just, I, I read the text and I immediately think the like, Symphony of the Night intro with Dracula and cheesy dialogue in that. It, it's along the same lines as it, pretty much. I've not actually played that game, though. I have not really played any Castlevania game. There's something I can maybe try out. Oh, no. Okay. Are you, like, attacking me in a cutscene there? What was that? I'd prefer to not die, actually. Oh my god, there's a lot of shit out there right now. I am glad I bought that thing. I think that's about all we're going to be seeing for today. Yep, okay. So, um... I basically rambled on endlessly about this point last time, so there's no need to keep going on about it this time, but, uh... As a recap, that is everything I plan on doing with Shovel Knight and its various DLC modes um, for this series. There's always a chance I might come back to it, but it's not going to be like a huge priority of mine or anything. Um, so, for uh, next month's videos, just if you haven't already made a suggestion on the Discord chat, I recommend doing that. Um, I don't have a winner yet, and uh, somebody just basically needs to put together a poll and figure out what I'm doing. Um, but yeah, that's... I don't know what else to say about this. This was a interesting game mode. Um, seemed fairly decent, and I enjoyed the level design of the one level that I did, even though it was frustrating in parts. But yeah, that's about it. So, uh, time to immediately record Action 52, and then, and then that's it. You'll just never hear from me again. <laughs>